brain sabotage our goals for instant gratification. Humans are smart creatures. We have come a long way in the past 100 years, be it outer space travel, penicillin, or the advent of the internet. Yet, we tend to make irrational decisions. We rather stay at a job where we are unhappy than pursue something else. We don't start working on a project for months until only a few days are left. We do things that will likely lead to regret down the road. So why do we do them? First things first. What comes to your mind when you see this beautiful, delicious chocolate cake? Isn't your mouth watering? Don't you just want a bite of it? Am I right or am I right? Now let's try and understand what our brain is thinking. We have three layers to our brain. The oldest layer is known as the reptilian brain or the brain stem. The second layer is the limbic brain. The most recent layer is the neocortex. Humans have three separate components of the brain that act very differently from one another. Over a long period of time, a newer layer developed over the older component to form the modern human brain or the neocortex. These three layers communicate with each other and influence our thoughts and decisions. Unfortunately, the older, powerful parts of our brain can work against what's best for us. The very first layer, known as the basal ganglia or reptilian brain, is the oldest of the three. It focuses on survival, such as nourishment, reproduction, and threat avoidance. While that's all good, this part of our brain is averse to changes and can be stubborn to the suggestions of other parts of the brain. The limbic brain emerged next, and it focuses on our emotional responses to situations. The limbic brain causes us to make snap judgments based on past experiences and memories. While these emotions and reactions can protect us, they can also be unfair judges. Finally, the neocortex is the newest part of the brain. It focuses on complex skills such as rational thinking, creativity, and languages. We have the neocortex to thank largely for civilization's advancements. Alright, so coming back to our cake scenario, what happens in the brain? As soon as a situation pops up, the three parts of our brain try to resolve the issue in different ways. For instance, when you saw that molten lava cake oozing with chocolate sauce, you start to salivate. Your reptilian brain sees food, while your limbic brain imagines how delicious it would be to bite into the cake. On the other hand, your rational neocortex sees the calorie-dense cake and says, Hold on a second, I'm supposed to be watching my weight. Why does it behave this way? When people get really close to obtaining a reward, their emotional brain takes over. So if a chocolate cake is staring right at you, things will get dicey. When we see, touch, or smell something that we really want, the temptation is too great to resist. We act impulsively because the dopamine in our brains gets all fired up. When our brain has calmed down afterward, we might end up regretting our actions. Our emotional brain has a hard time imagining the future, even though our logical brain clearly sees the future consequences of our current actions. Our emotional brain wants to max out the credit card, order dessert, and smoke a cigarette. Our logical brain knows we should save for the retirement, go for a jog, and quit smoking. So then, how do you resolve the dilemma? look at a few ways in which we can do so. Firstly, tend to basic needs. If possible, find ways to work with your reptilian and limbic brains, not against them. Even if the older parts of your brain don't always work in your best interest, it doesn't mean they're evil. The best way to tend to their needs is to maintain your energy levels. Feeling tired? Take a nap or get more rest. Is your stomach grumbling? Eat balanced meals throughout the day. Cranky from stress? Go and play. When your energy levels aren't being taken care of, your mood drops and your reasoning skills worsen. 
second, tie emotion to your goals. Our emotions can easily overpower any logic deduction skills we have. So if you really want to start creating a habit, then associate it with an emotion. For instance, if you forget to floss your teeth, put a sign up reminding yourself that cavities are painful. On the other hand, if you find it hard to work on a project, find ways to make it exciting. Like use the page turner technique to make it easier to get back into where you left off. You can also picture how your life will benefit from completing a task. Thirdly, go with it. Fighting your reptilian brain really doesn't help the situation. After all, it's only looking out for you. Instead, understand those needs and accommodate. Take a second to think it through. Don't jump to conclusions. Your neocortex is more powerful than you think. That intuitive gut feeling that you get is just your neocortex trying to tell you something. Listen to it. Our decisions are often driven by factors outside of logic and reasoning. Distractions and emotions can lead us away from where we want to go. But if you can find ways to get parts of the brain to cooperate and behave according to your goals, then you're well on your way to tipping the scales back in your favor. Best of luck.